Hello everyone at the Watt Train Conference uh, there in Frisco. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the conference so far and it's my privilege to just give a brief presentation relating to the theme really. How to address the new challenges of tomorrow using the resources we have today. As you can see we're at a railway location. This is a Bridge North on the Seven Valley Railway and we're here by kind permission of um, the railway and uh, arranged for us by Barry Morton who's the volunteer liaison officer here uh, and we've been able to speak to the railways engineering services manager and the human resources manager too to get some insights into how they're coping with the challenges relating to uh, engineering skills and so forth and uh, recruitment uh, so we shall see about that in a while uh, we shall also hope to have uh, a contribution from the Boiler and Engineering Skills Training Trust, uh, a 30 second, uh, sorry, 90 second film that they kindly consented to, to us using. Uh, Jonathan Newton in Australia is going to be uh, giving us uh, some insights into what's happening down there, especially as he's connected with uh, the V499 project, which uh, hopefully he'll tell us about. Sam Mackwell, who is uh, some, uh, an engineer who is developing a sustainable steam powered boiler powered by wood. We hope to be able to have a word with him. And Sean McMahon, probably known to most of you, is uh, following in LD Porter's footsteps and implementing the requirements that he's brought to life. And um, equipment that's 100 years old, we want to keep using for as, uh, as long as possible for the future. So there are challenges relating to that. Interestingly, in India, uh, it's something that we bring up with the, the people here. The railway boards approved a proposal to engage retired railway staff of over 65 to help maintain their fleets of the locomotives and so on so that the skills aren't lost. And that's really the key to it, isn't it? Uh, so we should be very interested to see what they say here at the Seven Valley, how they're coping with it, and these other ones that we've already referred to, to make it a, a kind of universal and world-centric uh, presentation. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you for, for watching. So here we are in uh, Bridge North and uh, we're speaking with uh, Neil Taylor and uh, Jane Priest. Uh, Neil is the uh, Engineering Services Manager and Jane is the uh, Human Resources Manager. So first of all, Neil, can you just tell us what you're responsible for here on the Central Valley? Yeah, hi Peter. Um, I'm responsible for the Engineering Services on rail. So um, locomotives, mm -hmm. steam locomotives, um, and carriage. I've got uh, a fleet of about 27 locomotives and over 80 carriages to look after. Mm -hmm. um, and at any one time, we've probably got eight operational locomotives um, and over 50 operational carriages. That's quite a, a rotor, isn't it, to get around each day, week, keep your eyes on. That's uh, quite a responsibility. How many staff do you have to deal with that? Um, I have nearly 50 paid staff, um, I have 8 apprentice uh, improvers um, and I've got about 150 volunteers on a regular basis uh, that look after that. Mm. Jane, coming to you in connection with the volunteers, what, perhaps you could explain what your role is here at the Summer Valley. Absolutely. My role is looking after the employment of the paid employees. Mm. So as Neil said, a number of those are engineers. Mm. We also have two public houses, we have retail, we have bars and um, uh, catering operations. Mm. So I look after everybody who is paid. There's also a voluntary officer who looks after the, the great number of volunteers we have here. That'd be Barry Morton. Barry Morton, that's right. Give him a name check, because he arranged this, which is very good. Oh, he deserves it. Yes, yes. He deserves a mention. Very good. So, so Neil, what about uh, the people that work in engineering? What level of skill are we talking here? The paid employees generally have a, a high level of skill and um, we've recruited them specifically for the tasks that they do. So whether they're a fitter machinist or a boilersmith, um, we, we've been very specific about their recruitment. Mm. The volunteers, by their very nature, mm. come with a, a very mixed level of skill. Mm. Um, some are very, very highly skilled, retired individuals, mm. um, but generally they're, they're people who have other walks of life. They're not engineers, mm. so the vast majority of them come from a non-engineering background. Mm. So what we're trying to do is embed a level of skill into those individuals, um, which is completely new. Yes, and I presume you must get like, the enthusiasts who think they'd like to 
work on engines up close and dirty? Yes, yeah, we get plenty of enthusiasm and, and actually the place thrives off the enthusiasm. It, it, it wouldn't be the place it is mm -hmm. if it wasn't for a level of enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. um, but we actually have to then target that um, yes. because we've got, uh, obviously with an operational fleet so big, mm -hmm. we have to keep these uh, locos running Mm. and we have to do some significant major overhauls which take up to two years mm. and if we didn't keep a good control over it that could easily go to four or five six years mm. so uh, so they are targeted at tasks that are yeah. within their capability yeah and what about the age range jane with the like engineers so those that work in the end what, what is the kind of age range we're talking here the age range can be anything from 16, which would be our youngest apprentice, mm -hmm. one started this month at 16, mm -hmm. and we have engineers who are in their 70s. Yes. So, so I was kind of interested in the top end, the top age range, what sort of percentage of the, of the total staff would that be, do you think, as, as a kind of ad hoc figure? I think if you're talking 50 years plus, mm -hmm. it's it's the majority, Is it? uh, because that's where the original love of steam the working on steam railways in the past yeah. has come from, yeah. or engineering skills they picked up elsewhere and yeah. perhaps have come to the railway yeah. as a second career yeah. and worked elsewhere first. Because yeah. yeah. interestingly, this is the 50th anniversary week, isn't it, that steam yeah. came to a halt on the, on the British mm -hmm. rail system. Yeah. So how do you go about then recruiting to make sure that there is a kind of follow-through mm -hmm. generation? You, if we talk about the, the apprenticeship scheme first, uh, we have a Heritage Skills Training Academy at St. Mary Railway, mm -hmm. and we're very grateful to um, the Charitable Trust, mm -hmm. Charitable Trust, because they are the ones who support and finance um, the apprentices in their early days through mm -hmm. employment and through obviously the college courses they go on. Mm -hmm. We recruit nationally, which mm -hmm. is in the UK the way that uh, you recruit an apprenticeship, mm -hmm. and we do have a wide uh, area of um, response from mm. Cornwall, Devon, um, Wiltshire, Yorkshire, mm. anybody who has an involvement in their own heritage railways in their area mm. would be looking for an apprenticeship will yeah. apply to us. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's our main route of having the 16, 17, 18 year olds in. Yes. The important thing for us is looking for enthusiasm as we said before, mm. but enthusiasm for the world of work as an engineer. Mm. It isn't playtime, you're coming no. to work here, and it, it's a fantastic place to work, obviously, sure. but it is hard work yes. with an engineer. You can't have a camera on, on the whole time. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Be paid to work. That's right. absolutely right. Yeah. 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 If you look at the, uh, talking of the age, suppose, well, you look at the paid staff, it's mm -hmm. actually a normal workforce age yeah. distribution because yeah. we have had, we've got the, the newer apprentices, we've mm -hmm. got some former apprentices who are now getting to the team leader level yeah. um, and then you've got uh, some some middle-aged and older staff and mm. um, whilst the volunteers tend to have a heavy skew towards mm. the, the back end of, mm. of the career mm. um, it's it's not that far off a normal distribution for the, mm. for the, for the paid staff. Yeah I was actually reading a little point uh, that Indian Railways uh, last month uh, have approved a proposal to engage retired railway staff, not over 65 years old, at a, I'm not sure what the amount, a thousand rupees, 1200 rupees per day, to re preserve, restore, revive railway heritage items such as steam locos, vintage coaches, steam cranes, similar signal station equipment and steam powered equipment. And then the, this comment was made, the move to engage old hands is a way to ensure that the expertise of maintaining heritage rolling stock and old equipment are passed on and yeah. that the existing treasure trove of railways symbolising 160 years yeah, of Indians' yeah. railway existence doesn't get lost, yeah. which is quite interesting. That, isn't that it? I think, is the challenge for the future. Yes. It's not so much the skill set, because the skills can be taught. Sure. It's the knowledge base. Yes. So knowledge is the key yes. to the future, yes. and the transfer of the knowledge. So what we've done here is we've kept on some um, older yes. staff, yes. or longer served staff. Yes to start handing over that knowledge to the 30-year-olds. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a key part of the, the development activity. Mm -hmm. And we're also rewriting some of our operational processes um, alongside those individuals mm -hmm. so that we can capture a level of knowledge mm -hmm. uh, to take it forward. Yes. But of course, the old, uh, older individuals aren't going to last forever, are they? That's, that's the kind of problem with that, isn't it? That's the challenge, isn't it? Because if they're not 65, they could be 64. I mean, according to the Indian Railways uh, mm. requirement. So there's still that getting kind of a, th a throughput, isn't mm. there, of uh, 
suitably trained and skilled uh, people. Do you have a, a dropout rate, you know, with the, 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 those that come on as apprentices, for example? As, as apprentices, yes, and I think most employees, uh, most employers taking on apprentices will, will do that mm. because you're, you're at a very young age entering the world of work mm. and deciding whether it's where you want to make a career. Mm. So probably in the four to five years that the scheme has been running, mm. it probably is a 40% dropout rate in the early days. Mm through somebody perhaps being homesick, wants to go back to where they were at school and where their friends were, um, to people who found that the railway isn't giving them the career they want, mm. even though they still love steam mm. heritage railways, sure. working here is hard. Yes. Yes. However, our hope is obviously that when we start that we will be able to employ our friend community. And, and you must know that that's going to be a possibility yes. throughout. Yes. Uh, how do you get them to... Uh, Stay. To encourage the apprentices to stay is probably threefold. Mm. In engineering services, they'll have their mentor and they'll have support from them in the workplace. There's also the buddies that the current apprentices can provide for them, which maybe um, could be after work, give them support if they don't live in this area. Mm -hmm. We've work very closely with the further education colleges and they have got a strong role in making sure that the training that they give on the one day release they go to the colleges for mm -hmm. is appropriate for us mm -hmm. and it could be as simple as we of course work an awful lot imperial measurements youngsters these days have grown up on metric mm -hmm. and we need to be sure that they are able to use both of those yes. so the college course needs to be appropriate for them yes and then finally the third route I think is from me making sure from a pastoral support that they have access to either myself or to Neil or their team leader if there's anything that they want to talk about mm -hmm. be that work related or something mm -hmm. akin to the world of work thank you so Neil to, to yourself now what would you say um, is the biggest challenge for you as the engineering um, services manager I think the biggest challenge is still very much uh, recruitment. Um, mm. it, it is a business like any other business mm. um, where people leave. Mm. Um, for example, I've just had three boilersmiths leave. Mm. Boilersmiths don't grow on trees. No. Uh, it's a very specific skill set mm. which doesn't tend to be trained in its own right. Mm. So we have to convert fabricators into boilersmiths mm -hmm. over an 18 month period. Mm -hmm. So having that level of churn, mm -hmm. uh, whilst it's nothing extraordinary, it is difficult in the context of you know, working with products which are you know, 50 to 100 years old. Sure, and you want them to go on for another 15 to, Absolutely. to 100, don't you? And, and the longer that process goes on, mm -hmm. the more deep the repairs are mm -hmm. and the more complicated the work is. Yes. So the, those individuals will be doing work which hasn't been done maybe for a hundred years. Yes. So I suppose it's thanks to people like um, the Reverend Audrey with Thomas the Tank, uh, but more recently mm -hmm. uh, Christopher Vine with Peter's Railway, where, where the basics of, sort of engineering are kind of made available to youngsters, really, so they might think about that. So when they see a steam engine on their heritage, <laughs> on their heritage railway, they'll know what was involved. Absolutely, I think the uh, the great thing about people who um, illuminate the uh, the world of engineering mm -hmm. and then specifically the world of um, steam railways mm -hmm. is that it, it is a recruitment device for us. Yes. Um, we need people to be enthusiastic and inquisitive about um, the the world that that is involved in having, for the main part, never been witness to a steam locomotive on British railways. Mm, absolutely, 50 years since uh, we saw them regularly. You'd be interested also that the world of Harry Potter yes. also yes. is encouraging carriage uh, enthusiasm oh, right. because people mm. actually come to the railway saying, I want to travel on a Harry Potter carriage. Do they? Yes. Because carriages um, in current uh, railway yes. um, rolling stock are yes. open plan, yes. whereas the, the compartment carriages um, have a real attraction for a lot of people. I, know. Yeah. I, I think the coachwork is very important, uh, the carriage and wagon department is also important for opportunities for work mm. because the apprentices who have worked there, and we do rotate them around the different departments in the early days, mm. have the opportunity to show off their uh, carpentry, woodworking skills, yeah. upholstery, yeah. Um, 
uh, painting, fine painting in terms yeah. of some of the, you know, the gold lettering yeah. or gold lines that are going down there. Yeah. Yeah. So it isn't all about the heavy engineering. No. There is other areas where people yes. can specialise in. Which is, which just reminds me of the Peter Snow series just recently on, on right. other channels. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks both very much for helping us to uh, got some insights that will help us to meet the new challenges of tomorrow using the resources we have today. Well, we're putting together a little piece for an international body that's interested in uh, making sure they've got the resources to deal with this kind of equipment in the future. Yeah. It's the, the World Alliance of Tourist Chums and Trains. Well, what, what brought you here to the Seven Valley as an apprentice? Um, engineer. My granddad was an engineer back in the uh, Second World War because he made the concrete platforms to oh, go right. into Calais. Did he? So he did all the engineering for that and he rebuilt the railways in France to you know, get the troops into France and battle the enemy but uh, and it was also my father, my father helped me you know, pursue something different yeah. so that was, uh, oh, Thomas the Tank Engine as well. Oh were well. you? Yes. Yeah. Well uh, that's where we all start you know, yeah. Thomas the Tank Engine. Yeah. So th those are the main reasons I got into engineering, it's something different, it's something, um, well. So here you are in a boiler? Pretty much yes. Yeah yeah in the, yeah, in the, in the boiler shop. So where do you see your career developing from here? Um, probably as a boiler smith and working on you know, steam engines in my life probably, that's the main... That's what you... that's your plan? Pretty much, yeah, yeah. That's, that's my only plan. And you enjoy, enjoy what you do? Yeah, yeah, no, it's really good, it's, you know, working on these things, it's brilliant, it's different and everybody talks about them all the time, so... Yeah, and when you see them going by you can think, I did something to that? Pretty much, yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. that's always the best part of the job. Yes, very good. Thanks very much. Welcome. My name is Sam Mackwell. I live in Canterbury, New Zealand. This is the new boiler for the wood-fired sustainable steam locomotive that I'm building. The design of the locomotive is in line with Porter's principles and technologies. Once complete, it will be in all respects a modern steam locomotive. Many years ago, I began developing a multi-purpose engine that was designed to obviate the need for fossil fuels. Eventually, I better understood the problem I was trying to solve and the implications of any particular solution. And so the steam locomotive became the solution of choice. The purpose of building this locomotive is to prove that steam has a pivotal role to play in combating the modern world's thirst for fossil fuels. Inside the shell of this boiler, the design is a bit different. I've developed this alternative design to enable wood fuel steam locomotives to economically and environmentally outperform both diesel and electric motive power. For the same reason, the boiler lends itself well to preserved locomotives in the heritage sector. Because the boiler can't explode, it costs less to build and to maintain. You can raise a full head of steam in 10 to 15 minutes from cold, and so locomotive availability is improved. And it doesn't throw sparks. So the locomotive can be used during dry summers when fire restrictions are in place. Importantly, because the changes are internal, the external appearance of the boiler is left unchanged. In designing and building this locomotive, not only do I endeavour to secure a future for STEAM, but also to inspire the current and younger generation to become involved in the unique and balanced technology of the steam locomotive. If you go away at the end of it with such a sense of achievement that you know, one pair of hands is, has created so much and, and then when you have an engine in steam like we have today um, and then when you see the engines running up and down up the railway knowing that yeah, it, was, it, it, was, it was us, it was our hands, we, we built that. You know, no machines did that, we did that ourselves. It's such a sense of achievement to, to see them running by every day. And, and then year after year they're still going. Seeing the boilers that we've worked on, done all the work into them, to finally see them out, pressure gauge on, 
full of steam, safety valves lifted, and knowing I was a part of that, and I've I've done that, and seeing it go up and down the line for the first time, it's going to be a real, real big moment, I think. You're in, in it because you have a passion and a drive for for working on anything steam related, be it steam locomotives, traction engines, steamboats, stationary engines. It's that drive that you want to see. You want to see these things work. It's as I said, it's just the drive that, that pushes you forward to get the engine running at the end of the day. That's the because it is the next transfer generation. It's no legacy, this won't happen. Here in Argentina, modern steam development continues apace. Apart from biomass fuel and solar powered modern fixed plant steam generators, rail issues are focused upon the continued steam locomotive development at the Ferrocarril Austral Foyino. The design, manufacture and fitting of a double Lempo exhaust system combined with oil firing combustion improvements to the Vulcan built broad gauge class 12E mainline locomotive number 3925 of the Ferro Club in Buenos Aires. I'm Sean McMahon and extend my heartfelt greetings to you all at the conference in the United States of America. Por último, pero no menos importante, en Ayacucho, provincia de Buenos Aires, Argentina, trabajamos en la reconstrucción y modificación de la North British Locomotive Company. 8A número 3351. Este proyecto utilizará la tecnología legada por el ingeniero Livio Dante Porta, tal como la conversión para utilización de multicombustible a través de un nuevo sistema de gasógena, un sistema de escape tipo Lempor y mejoras tanto mecánicas como termodinámicas. Todo este entrenamiento teórico práctico para las nuevas generaciones de gente joven tiene como objetivo asegurar el funcionamiento y mantenimiento de las locomotoras a vapor a lo largo de nuestro país a medida que nos acercamos al final de la segunda década del siglo XXI. Mi nombre es Pablo Adrián Rojas, trabajo en el Instituto Nacional de Tecnología Industrial junto a John McMahon en el Centro de Investigación y Desarrollo en Mecánica. Les mando un afectuoso saludo a todos los presentes allí en la conferencia What Train en Estados Unidos.